Pascal. Uh, I'm in charge of the corporate environment and earth for ST Microelectronics, uh, and I'm a member, of course, of the NanoStream uh, project. A uh, few words about ST Microelectronics. Uh, we are a semiconductor company uh, billing uh, $8.3 billion uh, uh, last year, so 45,000 employees worldwide and uh, dealing with manufacturing sites worldwide and including six in, uh, in Europe, so France, Italy and uh, in Malta, uh, which is the So what, what we are doing is making semiconductors, many products in many focus, especially for automotive and Internet of Things, which are uh, the key drivers for, for leading the semiconductors industry. Uh, we are present everywhere, everywhere from, of course, many, many applications that uh, we all have in our pocket, from smartphone, from driving, from your car, etc. So definitely, uh, my job part of uh, the NanoStream was uh, to, 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 as an as an industrial partner, uh, to be uh, to be one of the uh, of the providing some elements of what we are doing, and especially using within your fabs in order to control and to better control the risk that we could have with chemicals, including with nanomaterials. So, as I said this morning in my presentation, clearly we need risk assessment tool. Alors, first of all, why? We know that uh, we are using chemicals to making our product, to making our process, within our manufacturing sites. And since a while, we are managing, of course, uh, responsibly, let's say, uh, towards, of course, our workers and towards the environment, uh, all these chemicals. But as uh, we know more and more, we are introducing more and more new chemicals which contain nanomaterials. And, and clearly, uh, what is important for us is to make sure that we will continue to properly manage uh, this kind of, uh, of risk, this new risk. And we know that if we do not have so much uh, risk assessment uh, properties or tools, uh, there is a risk that it could be make some barrier to innovation. Because when we have some doubt about the risk, when we are not enough clear about what kind of risk we, we can have, uh, we can uh, have some precautionary principle, which is of course uh, well known and good, but in some time it could let's say blocked or at least limit the innovation. And for us, the innovation within the semiconductors is absolutely key uh, to make business. We clear, we definitely need to make business with innovative product. And innovative product means, again, innovative processes, innovative material, and for sure, innovative techniques as well to put the product on the market. So having a risk assessment is definitely a, a key point uh, in order to continue to be there, to be, to be performance, of course, to be efficient on, the, uh, on all our, our different processes and to avoid to be trapped, let's say, by, by uh, too much, uh, let's say, problems that could be limit the, the, the innovation. So one, it was definitely one of the interests of uh, the NanoStream project in order to make sure that we can continue to innovate that's again the goal of uh, a company like ours, but of course being responsible again towards environment and towards people. So a life cycle approach, uh, let's say that again uh, in the context of the history of the semiconductors, we have a pretty on the bracket good tools uh, uh, on, and regulations to again starting from raw material down to recycling process. I can talk about conflict-free minerals uh, that is now definitely well defined. Of course we have REACH, we have ROHS, so plenty of regulation and good tool in order to assess uh, during again the whole life cycle. But, but, uh, and again it was one of the key discussions that we had this morning, the problem is that when we are trading, again introducing sorry, new material like nanomaterial inside uh, the, the chemicals, it's clear that uh, we do not have all time all the requested information about, again, the risk, the tox toxicity, uh, any kind of potential damage that we can generate towards all people, or earth of people, which is of course the, the key first priority, and of course the, the, the environment. So the life cycle approach is for sure definitely is the right approach. But again, uh, we need to, to have much more go further, having more information, more risk uh, uh, 
definitions, let's say, in order for new, for new material, which again you are using on daily basis inside your process. So even if, again, we are not producing nano material, but you are using and we are using it. And releasing, releasing uh, for consumer use, for example, or even if your products are not directly uh, let's say in touch with, uh, with the consumer because of course our product is used uh, within uh, applications but definitely it's very important to have uh, every maximum of information how to manage this risk. So the challenge is how to get how to get all this again information uh, especially for toxic ones because again few are toxic and uh, we have seen this morning that uh, we are progressing we are progressing but it's definitely the challenge and based on the number of new nanomaterials which are put in the market every year uh, with the exponential increase uh, this is really the challenge so for sure we need we need to continue to manage this uh, as we do in the past for chemicals but of course we have the specificities of, of these nano properties nanomaterial properties